Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hey, hello and welcome to Stan, the Energy Man on Aloha Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. It's been a busy couple of weeks with Verge two weeks ago, and this week we had an interesting Renew Rebuild Hawaii yesterday at the Foreign Trade Zone and had some great presentations. And the theme, one of the main themes besides microgrids, and of course because I was there I had to hijack hydrogen into it, was sustainability. And that's kind of what we're going to focus on today. You know, Hawaii sits on basically two legs of a three-legged stool, and the third leg used to be agriculture. And we still have the military and tourism as the other two main legs. But we're trying to get um, high tech and agriculture back in position to be an economic uh, leg of our economy and, and help us really to be less, less dependent on mainland uh, shipping and mainland products for our own sustainable uh, you know, upkeep with uh, food products, but also to use some of the byproducts from agriculture to help us do clean energy. And I told the group yesterday at Renew Rebuild that um, one of the best quotes on sustainability I, I've ever heard was from a gentleman named Robert Kennedy Jr., Bobby Kennedy's son, who's an environmental lawyer. I ran into him um, about two years ago in Texas, and he said sustainability has to be quantified in economic terms, and it has to go from cradle to grave. It has to go from the time you start the project and put in the initial compounds, components, energy, whatever, all the way to what you're gonna do at the end of life, whether it's recycle, uh, put it in a landfill, burn it, shoot it off to the sun, whatever it is. And when you don't do the sustainability in that definition, you get things like Yucca Mountain, where you gotta store nuclear, spent nuclear material and nobody wants it in their backyard, or you get CFL light bulbs where everybody's going, going renewable and, and going clean and, and going uh, ener more uh, energy efficient, only to find out we got mercury in these things and now they're gonna end up in landfills. And you make those kind of mistakes. So if you wanna do sustainability right, you gotta do the cradle to grave analysis, the fully burdened cost of that, that process. And so today we're gonna talk a little bit about sustainability and how agriculture and sustainability can be applied here in Hawaii. And my guest today is Dennis Furukawa from Real Green Power. Almost forgot the power part. Dennis, thanks for being here today. Nice to be here, Stan. I've known Dennis for quite a while and um, don't get a chance to talk to him very much, so he's kind of secretive and he's kind of quiet, but he gets a lot done. So, Dennis, tell us a little bit, number one, about how you got started in what you're doing with Real Green Power. Our, um, our genesis was uh, all about trying to deal with the uh, massive amounts of water, uh, wastewater that was coming out of the sugar mills. Mm. Um, and uh, so that was about, right, like eight years ago while well, we still had sugar mills. Um, mm -hmm. And there is a, uh, there's a lot of energy potential in, in water uh, in, in two ways. Uh, one of them, when you've got polluted water uh, that has uh, fermentables in it, then mm. you can create biogas, mm -hmm. which, you know, methane, which is a combustible fuel. Um, on the other end, uh, you know, water itself has a lot of energy value. Uh, for right. one, it takes a lot of uh, energy to access it. Um, and so if you have it in proximity to a use, uh, then you've, um, you know, really shortcut the amount of energy that, that goes it's into, moving. yeah, mm -hmm. to supplying the resource to where you need it. Um, and then on the other end, it takes an awful lot of uh, permitting and energy and, uh, and compliance uh, to get rid of, of wastewater. Mm -hmm. So uh, our uh, main objective was actually to take the, uh, the water, which is, we, at back then it was in the millions of gallons a day, mm -hmm. five to six millions of gallons a day, which was our target. Uh, and then there are a lot of other agricultural uh, byproducts in, sh you know, sugar. You're mm -hmm. fam familiar with molasses, yeah. mm -hmm. but there's invert sugars. Mm -hmm. uh, and then so being able to um, use those resources in combination with the wastewater to produce uh, baseload energy was, was our objective. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so, yeah, we went pretty far along that route and then 
troubles, you know, in terms of like the stability or the long-term uh, uh, viability of sugar really yeah. sort of torpedoed our, our efforts there. But then um, we, uh, we at the, you know, at the same time we were taking a look at uh, uh, processing domestic wastewater. Mm -hmm which is a much, much larger uh, issue. Um, our approach is, is different, however, from uh, the traditional methods of, of wastewater treatment, um, and our objectives are different, too. So we're, we're our, our focus was actually taking the technology that we had developed for this ag mm -hmm. wastewater thing and then use it for domestic. But to, with, with a similar objective, though, to create recycled water for ag. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the situation that we have typically is you have a centralized wastewater treatment plant, which is located the lowest spot. Right, uh, downhill. Uh, right? Mm -hmm. right, so that you have gravity working for you. But then that puts it the far, furthest away it could from possibly be from that. where all of the resource, you know, the water yeah. uh, And you got to pump it back. Exactly, to right. Okay. So um, what we've been focused on is, is packaging wastewater treatment systems so that you can put them in distributed locations so that you can create agricultural right. water reuses. Yeah, it's important mm -hmm. to realize that energy is in every step of the process. So mm -hmm. you, you've got to look at your whole process. Like I said, that whole cradle to grave look at where you're using energy. And energy could be potential energy with gravity, taking your water all the way downstream and somehow it's got to get back upstream. Mm -hmm. um, things like that are important. And mm -hmm. You know, and Maui Sugar, which was probably one of the last entities that, that went down um, in the sugar business, they were doing the gas uh, to make power on Maui and produced almost all of Maui's power with, with sugar cane waste. So between uh, recycling the water products and able to use the gas and things like that, really important. I'd like to, to mention, too, that a lot of people, when they hear um, methane or they hear natural gas, they, they automatically get defensive because they go, that's a greenhouse gas, it's not good. Well, it isn't good if you let it up, it's, it's really bad. But the whole idea is nature produces it and you can either let it go into the air or you can use it. And when you use it, um, especially if you burn it or use it as a natural gas or you pull the hydrogen out of it, now all of a sudden you mitigate all the negatives that you get from natural gas and it turns into something that's usable and something that's more environmentally friendly. So that kind of gets to the heart of what you folks are, are focusing on, then, correct? Uh, it, indeed, yeah. It's uh, trying to uh, essentially take all of those negatives and turn them into positives. The, uh, the other aspect of our technology is that it's really super energy efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the uh, latest iterations of our work, um, uh, we've got sewage treat package sewage treatment plants that are able to be powered by solar energy uh, you know a very small solar package um, and then uh, you know it can be augmented by uh, you know the renewable energy that is produced uh, through the biogas but in 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 general our um, objectives are to minimize the amount of methane that we're producing uh, because actually, uh, so the biological process that takes you to methane is actually, is actually uh, relatively long. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it can take uh, days, uh, you know, if you've got uh, difficult to digest uh, materials. Uh, but uh, the biology that we're utilizing is very rapid in, in degrading uh, fermentable solids and solubilizing them. Uh, so, you know, making them into liquids. Uh, and so uh, our, uh, our energy efficiency uh, is, is about 85% uh, uh, better than uh, the traditional methods of sewage treatment. And, okay. uh, well, I know we've got some images of, uh, of some of your equipment stuff. You want to go through those and, and talk to them? Sure. OK, sure. hey, Robert, can you bring up some of those images? So this is your intro slide. Next slide. All right, so our, our technology uh, was developed at uh, you know, uh, industrial scale. Mm -hmm. uh, and the objectives were, were to produce 
uh, things that could handle in the tens of thousands to you know hundreds of thousands of gallons per day. And the upper image is at the uh, Hawaii Kai sewage treatment plant. Okay, right by Sandy Beach. Exactly, and it was uh, put in there as a, an alternative uh, means in, in cooperation with UH, uh, American Water, and, and AECOM, uh, and it was used as a study. Uh, papers were written, um, and it indicated that our that technology right there was capable of <coughs> reducing the energy demands uh, by half over the traditional means of uh, sewage treatment. And when did that equipment go into service? That was the 2013. Okay, and, yeah, and, and in the lower slide, that's just another view of it? Uh, the lower slide is actually a project that, that predated it uh, by about a year, which is uh, at a brewery in California. Uh, and uh, in the background of that, it's a, it's a pond full of sludge uh, from brewery wastewater. And so our tanks there were in, uh, essentially treating that, that brewery sludge. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next slide, Robert. So what we've done is we've uh, focused on providing sanitation in places where there's uh, no sewers. Uh, and in particular, uh, because our system is so energy efficient and that we could uh, power the whole thing with just the uh, number of solar panels that are sitting on top of a 20-foot shipping container, the objective was is that you could put these things out in the middle of a desert mm -hmm. uh, and, and try and address the problems of uh, you know, displaced people you know, uh, all of the millions of people that are displaced, uh, and um, parks, uh, military bases, mm -hmm. places where you don't have the infrastructure to support, uh, you know, uh, populations or, or, or uh, yeah, for instance, like in a military base, you have groups of people that come and go. <coughs> right. And they can be lots of people. Sure. Right? Tra for, when they're transient on the way to a deployment or something like that. Yeah. So the uh, the objective would be to uh, site one of these units where you've got that waste uh, issue and then to turn the, the water into uh, reusable uh, irrigation water. And that pretty much eliminates the need to go around and um, provide uh, porta potties and those things right. require a lot of servicing, uh, and it's it's highly you know uh, cost intensive. Well, we all know that on Air Force bases there's always golf courses, so you definitely want to have water for your golf courses. <laughs> <if you're the laughs> Air Force. There you go. That's really important. Right. So, right. That would work per perfect for them. Is there any power that comes off of these as well, uh, or the solar panels provide energy to pro to move your process along? But you're basically providing the water, the a, a solution to reusing the water and putting it back into a usable form? Um, well, uh, so you know, because, actually, can we go to the next slide? <clears throat> sure. Yeah. How about Robert, bring up the next slide there. All right, so um, actually, if you can go to the next yep. one. So uh, what we have here, this is a, a system that we just installed at a homeless camp in, on Sand Island. Mm, okay. um, and you can see that we have solar panels on the, uh, a wastewater treatment unit. Um, and that unit itself, just those six panels, those are 360 watt panels. Mm -hmm. um, those six panels are, have enough energy to run uh, the bathroom units, which are, are shown off to the, in the, on the lower part of that image. Uh, and so if we were actually to put solar panels on top of the bathroom unit as well, we would have export power. Great. That would be awesome. Yeah, it, it is kind of awesome because the, uh, the idea would be that if you have a population that is uh, essentially bereft of infrastructure, mm -hmm. you can drop these things in there. And as long as you have you know, a source of drinking water and uh, uh, water for showers and mm -hmm. whatnot, then you can use this as the center point of creating, uh, um, you know, a small village. Yeah. Right. You know, well, we're about halfway through our 30 minutes here, so we're going to take a quick break and we'll come back with Dennison and talk a little bit more about his system shortly. 
Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Gabrieli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matters to tech, matter to science, uh, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests. The students uh, of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. Hey, welcome back to Stand Energy Man. On my lunch hour, we're, we're talking sustainability and turning what everybody else doesn't want into something that you can actually use, which is always nice. And uh, we've got Dennis Furukawa here from Real Power, Real Green Real Power. Green power I'm close, I'm really close, I almost got it. At my age, I'm lucky to remember anything. <laughs> and uh, Real Green Power takes uh, wastewater and treats it and makes it uh, usable for agriculture and other things right where you need it, which is the key part, because every time you're moving something, old, old, your old Covey business people know that transportation is non-value added. It doesn't, it, it doesn't do anything but cost you stuff, and it gets your stuff to market, but you don't need it to build it, you don't need it to make stuff. So we bring in value to water and treating it and using it where you need it. So we, uh, we're showing some, some pictures of uh, potential use in homeless camps and um, and things like that. So let's jump back into some of those uh, images and and see what we've got coming up. So this is the one that this one you said is at Sand Island here on Oahu. Yes, it is. Okay. Right. And and what we have there is the things uh, behind the blue doors. Those are full bathrooms. So it's a shower, a toilet, and a sink. Okay. Uh, so it provides hygiene and sanitation. All right. And next image, Robert. Mm -hmm. This is what it looks like inside then? Right, so uh, you know, in, in the image prior to that, essentially we had the bathrooms in a separate container as a wastewater thing, so, um, and that was because we needed extra capacity. We needed, the, the image that you're uh, seeing here, those are only, those are six half bathrooms. Okay, I see. Right, so there's no showers in there, whereas the other one with the requirement okay. was to have showers. Um, so in, in, in this case, what, what the objective is, is uh, um, something that you can drop onto a site, uh, you know, plug it in, and then start, uh, you know, processing for irrigation uses. Um, and uh, one of the, the largest headaches that you have in dealing with, uh, you know, domestic wastewater is what to do with sludge. The sludge, mm -hmm. yeah. And our, our process uh, essentially concentrates up sludge. It, it focuses on processing the water, and then so the volume of sludge that you remove is really, really small. So okay. we're, uh, in, in this case, we've been operating the sewage, uh, or the sanitation uh, thing for about three weeks over at the Sand Island facility. And we've ended up with about 150 gallons of sludge. And in a typical situation, right, you would, well, the current, or the, the situation that they had there was uh, not processing and, and using um, uh, portable potties. Mm -hmm. uh, they were removing um, several thousand gallons a day of wastewater wow. by hauling. So when, right? you, when you let the sludge concentrate a little bit, um, from my understanding, you actually help downstream in terms of if you wanted to take that sludge and put it in like a gasifier, you just have to dewater it a little bit because the gasifier needs some moisture in it, and you could actually take that sludge and process it through a gasifier, which would again give you power and heat and other things. And again, it's like using that whole value chain in the process. So take the sludge, dewater it a little bit more, um, stick it in the gasifier, get some power and some heat. Um, and then that's another added energy source at your site right there. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, on the on the energy efficiency side and the water quality <clears throat> side, uh, by removing all of those solids and not you know liquefying them, then all of the all of the carbon and nitrogen and phosphorus and magnesium them. and all of those things are actually. 
uh, held back in yeah. the in the sludge, and then so the water quality is better uh, on the back end. So um, yeah, we're just really trying to focus on the efficiency of of okay. Yeah. So what's the next image we got, Robert? Uh, uh, actually, you can continue down. Um, a little bit more? Yeah. Oh, that's the last image you have? Okay. Uh, right. This is oh, the okay. last image that came through, so okay. we didn't get all of them on there, I guess. But I think you had somewhere, um, you can just, you can talk to the ones that we have here on the, on the, on the uh, sheets, but um, we had some here, and also um, there were some where it actually showed uh, over in, in uh, African continent, you know, some of the the um, refugee camps on the African continent. Exactly. So, um, so there's a program uh, that was developed by a nonprofit called Face to Face, mm -hmm. and their uh, objective is to um, teach villagers in these re in remote mm -hmm. locations um, how to reuse uh, their domestic uh, water. Mostly, it's their you know their bathing water and their you know, the, mm -hmm. the stuff for dishes. Um, to create small gardens that are next to their their houses, um, rather than uh, relying entirely on uh, you know the the farmland that is outside of the village, okay. uh, which is which is not personal, mm -hmm. right? Um, so you can't decide that you know you want to grow tomatoes or cucumbers when essentially the you know the village is growing sorghum, for yeah. example. Um, and it has been transformative. Mm -hmm. So uh, you've got within two months, you've got people who are you know who have kale uh, mm -hmm. to eat, or and uh, you know in, in a few months corn and pumpkin and squashes, and it's it's made a huge difference in their diets. Now, mm -hmm. we'd like to take that um, and to do that at refugee camps, okay. right? because you know. Everybody, uh, you know, has hygiene, uh, or, or the you know the good refugee camps have a pretty good hygiene, uh, you know, requirement and and facilities for that. Uh, but I mean, if you take a look at the images of these refugee camps, there's no trees, mm -hmm. there's no par you know, there's no yeah. parks, there's there's no way for them to actually grow food. So um, our objective is actually to work with uh, nonprofits like Face to Face. Uh, or the uh, UNHCR, and get the um, you know the reuse of water uh, and uh, small scale farming going in these in these refugee mm -hmm. camps, and the and the economic uh, uh, snowball effect is 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 really powerful mm -hmm. because you know it's not that you're just going to um, have uh, one or two people uh, you, know, hoard, you know growing. Uh, Lettuce and 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 hoarding it. There's a lot of sharing, uh, and and if you can create cooperation mm -hmm. between uh, you know individual families or, or <coughs> blocks of families, um, uh, and get value-added activities like you know making uh, salads or uh, baking bread or you know creating value-added food products or you know, creating other services, mm -hmm. then uh, you've actually brought a lot of dignity back to the lives of these people because it's not that they're just necessarily waiting for handout. And a lot of these people come from very uh, mercantile backgrounds. I mean, sure. you know, the, uh, in in Syria, that's the you know that's the uh, uh, the focal point of global trade, you know, back back in the ancient world. Uh, yeah. So these people uh, have, you know, lots and lots of experience in, in these sorts of things. And it, uh, that's all been lost uh, because they've Just been yeah, being, yeah. being refugees, yeah. right? So if we can help glue everything back together uh, mm -hmm. in a small way, it will bring a lot of dignity and um, and a lot less strife and unhappiness, yeah. I think. Well, I know in, in a lot of the underdeveloped um, locations around the world, um, human waste is put right back into fields and stuff, and that causes other problems. How does your system um, basically mitigate that? How does it, it like if we want to do that in Hawaii, um, with all the permitting and things that you mentioned, how do we, how do we get things like waste at Sand Island going through the system 
to be in the sludge that we can put back in the field as fertilizer and put the nitrogen and everything back where we, where we really need it. Mm -hmm. You know, how does your system do that? Well, first of all, right, you separate the water from the right. solids. Uh -huh. and then the, So the solids go towards a composting or if you wanted to, you know, put it in H power or something like that, that's, that's, okay. that's quite possible. Um, but the water, uh, depending upon the reuse, there are uh, requirements for reuse. Right. Um, and so uh, our, our, our biological process will take it so far. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, you, the addition of uh, filtration, polishing, and disinfection will allow that water to be used for you know, any grade of water which you decide to, to choose. Now there are uh, requirements for testing mm -hmm. um, that uh, you would um, be subject to if you were going to uh, uh, propose using this for, for instance, uh, you know, reuse for washing yourself right. or uh -huh. flushing toilets or, or, you know, putting it on, on food products. Um, but, uh, you know, we've built in uh, you know, the capacity to meet whatever sorts mm -hmm. of, uh, of reuse. Uh, but this is part of your proprietary process then to, to mitigate any of the dangers involved with reusing these, th this wastewater or whatever and using it viably in agriculture and, and putting it back into service, basically. Right, well, there's essentially two main focuses. One, to get all of the particulates out of there right. and the, you know, the viruses and, and right. all of that is the, is the second part. So, um, yeah, we, uh, we, we focus on uh, our, you know, propri the, the, the proprietary part is actually the biological processing of it. And then we can plug on, for instance, right, uh, reverse osmosis, uh -huh. uh, UV disinfection, or, yeah. or, uh, or, or um, you know, any other sorts of uh, process change which are required by, you know, the, the various jurisdictions that we find ourselves in. Yeah. I know most people would find this a little uneasy to talk about at dinner time or something, but let's face it, if you're a space, an astronaut in space, they don't flush their toilet and stick it out the window. I mean, they're recycling their water, probably using similar processes to what you're talking about. Indeed. And they end up re reusing every bit of H2O they can get there, mm -hmm. uh, get through their system. Mm -hmm. So there are systems that are designed to take care of those issues. and. We probably should be doing more to use them, uh, especially if we can use them economically and help uh, sustain our environment. Because Hawaii, Hawaii needs to get more back into growing its own food, things like that. We, we've, we've got that down. Though. The ancient Hawaiians supported about the same size population as we have now, and they didn't have Costco or Sam's Club or Safeway or anybody or Foodland or anybody to bring all this food in, yeah. and they did it. And so why can't we do it too? They, yeah. Probably got to look back and look at some of their stuff too. And so, Dennis, believe it or not, a half hour's flown by, and uh, we appreciate you coming and showcasing your stuff. We'd be glad to have you back in another couple months and talk about uh, maybe some of your deployed units out in, in other places and right. catch up with you then. So, right. thanks for being Thank on you, with Sam. us. All right. And uh, until next week, Stan Energy Man signing off, and we'll uh, we'll catch up to you with some more great things in the world of energy. Aloha.